Hej mamma. God kväll mamma. Ja, det är bra. Nej. Nej, jag har inte hunnit klaga till henne. Ja, det var svårare än jag trodde. Ja. På spåret. Om en halvtimme. Ja, men det hinner jag nog inte. Om jag vill flytta hemifrån. Mm. Mamma, nej jag vill... Nej, jag har inget bättre för mig. Nej. Ja, jag hänger upp den också. Jag skyndar mig. Hello Finland friends and welcome to another episode of Fix or Bust. This time I'll be taking a shot at repairing a big ass TV, or rather, spoiler alert, the power supply from a big ass TV. Eh no, not another power supply! Oh come on, it'll be fun! Whoa, 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 stop the tape! What's going on? Second video and already a new segment? Who does he think he is? You ask, well, good friends, uh, I have a confession to make. This might come as a complete surprise, but I am not a native English speaker. Uh, I know, unbelievable, right? Um, this means that, well, sometimes I'm in a hurry getting things done and I don't have the cognitive capacity to come up with something smart to say while I'm tinkering away, especially when I'm a bit grogged up. For these situations I thought it'd be better if I shoot the video first and pick out the best parts and narrate them afterwards. I think that will save both you and me from quite a few stressful situations. Well, what are we waiting for? We have a TV to repair. This is our TV and about four months after the warranty expired, this happened. It turned into a Hello World project. A 3000 plus euro Hello World project. It's an LG OLED 65 E7V and as long as it's working it's an absolutely fantastic TV. I mean, words cannot describe how good I think the picture quality is. Uh, when I'm finalizing this video it's pushing the three year mark. It's been discontinued so you might be able to pick it up at a fairly good price. Probably not a price anyone would call cheap though. All the exit prices I could find online were still hovering at around 2500 euro. But if you are looking for a new TV and your main requirement is a very high quality 4K picture then I do recommend to check it out. And look, I'm already trying to break into the sucker. The little cover plate for the mains power cable was not easy to remove by hand, so I recommend a spudger or a similar tool. And actually, I didn't immediately jump on this thing trying to tear it apart. I decided to try the normal person way of uh, solving this kind of issue by going to the store and complaining. And they were actually quite helpful. Uh, I bought this from the Nordic company El Giganten or Giganti in Finland. But eventually they had to hand me over to LG support. And um, here I'm struggling with the power connector. Yeah, as you can see there were a number of screws holding the back cover in place. But also, and I cannot for the life of me figure out how someone could be so evil, they have doubled it with plastic clips. Oh, I hate plastic clips from the bottom of my heart. I never shot any close-ups when I removed the power supply board because, well, I was in a hurry and it wasn't that interesting. Just a few obvious screws and connectors. And the board is on the bench. If I remember everything correctly, I did bust quite a few things out before this and I also took one round with the thermal camera. So this is just to show you what I've found so far. And the thermal camera is quite badly misaligned. It's an AliExpress cheapie. What's a bit funny is that the images are misaligned in two planes, not just one. Uh, parallax error in one plane is inevitable since there are two sensors and they are 
spaced a certain distance apart. But I fixed the misalignment in the other plane scenes just by desoldering and reseating the IR sensor. I obviously forgot to press record in the app itself, but you can see what's going on. That big chip there in the bottom half, uh, just left of center, it's getting really hot. And uh, safety third there, 5 volts residue shouldn't be a problem. So now I'm moving on to test this IC. It's a Sunken SSC 3S927, and that is a resonant mode controller. I won't go into uh, any details about how a resonant mode switching circuit works, but basically it can achieve a very high efficiency if the load is expected to be fairly constant and you dimension everything accordingly. So I'm just checking for any shorts or odd values and comparing with the data sheet as we go. Anyway, uh, LG support said no. I had to lay out expense for shipping it to their service center, paying for the diagnostics, and if the repair cost was deemed reasonable, they would not cover that either. Well, boomers and bronies, we have a bingo. The controller I see was just a red herring, and uh, not very surprisingly, this was just a shorted MOSFET, common as mud. And we are also seeing an open fuse, and this might be something that happened between uh, shots. I did plug this in now and then for testing purposes, because I think, well, I'm not sure, but I think that we would not have seen that controller IC heating up if that fuse was open during the initial tests. So, uh, the consumer laws here in Finland are quite generous. Even after the general warranty, which I think is almost always two years, you do have the right to expect a product to last for, well, its expected lifetime. And what that means is, of course, open for debate. but. I assume that LG are counting on not many people being willing to take that debate and just quacks everybody over as hard as they can. Huh, everybody needs a good scraping now and then. Not entirely sure about this silicone, if it's there for thermal purposes or mechanical stability or a bit of both. And no, I could not find a narrower solder wick. Thanks for asking. It eventually got the job done. And this actually took a lot longer than what you are seeing. At the end there my hand was getting quite warm. Oh crap, not an STD again. What STD? Well, this time it's the STD13N60M2. And it's always good practice to confirm your suspicions by measuring the components of board. In this case though, I was 99.9% .9 sure that I had found the culprit, but you never know, stranger things have happened. But yeah, it's stone dead. And you should never ever throw anything away, as long as it contains either electronic components or alcohol. I was so lucky to find a near perfect replacement part inside an old desktop PC power supply. I did say near perfect, time for some advanced problem solving. Sometimes you just need to reduce your footprint, and that is precisely why man invented the hacksaw. Hey, you know. And voila, we have transmogrified our TO220 package into a D2 pack. 
<laughs> ja, det blev nog slag i vilita där. Hej då, Uno. Just some more dismembering. And while I'm fumbling about preparing for soldering, I might as well show you the data sheets side by side for a quick comparison. Here are the contestants in the blue corner, ready for retirement. A little D pack STD 13N 60M2. In the red corner, fit for fight, we want the TO220 package uh, SPP 15N 60C3. And um, the only surprise here, perhaps, is that there aren't that many surprises. The two components match each other fairly well spec-wise, but let's do a quick comparison anyway. The banner specs, maximum drain source voltage, 650 volts for both parts. Uh, on resistance, um, 380 milliohms versus 280 milliohms and max current 11 amps versus 15 amps. So very similar and a bit better for the Infineon part. Max gate voltage plus minus 25 volts for the ST part versus only plus minus 20 volts for the Infineon part, but that is static at DC. Anything above one hertz um, is plus minus 30, so it's a win. Maximum current at the higher temperature follows along quite well. The Infineon does not quite scale when it comes to the pulsed current, but it's still higher than the ST part, so no problem again. Power dissipation, 110 watts versus 156. Uh, regarding the Avalanche uh, characteristics, much better for the Infineon part. 460 millijoules versus 125 and 15 amps versus 2.8 so it's definitely more rugged and that's a good thing the rate of change parameters peak diode recovery voltage slope and mosfet ruggedness uh, or drain source voltage slope these, I must admit that I didn't know a thing about these parameters before making this video. When I was searching for a replacement, I just noticed that the values were equal and thought, great, I don't know what it is that I like about you, but I like it a lot. They specify how fast the rest of the circuit should allow the voltage to change across the MOSFET. In general, that's the ruggedness, and specifically when the internal body diode of the MOSFET is in the reverse recovery phase. If you, like me, have masochistic tendencies and find these sort of things fascinating, then drop me a comment if I should make a video about the more esoterical topics surrounding uh, MOSFETs. And I won't bore you with the rest of the details. There are some minor differences, but I am confident that they will not matter for this application. And this is also one of the procedures that took quite a while longer than what I show you here. Partly because this was the first time I tried soldering behind the camera and it was not as easy as I thought. And the component and the board also swallowed a lot of heat so I had to get in there with the iron for a nerve-wreckingly long time. And I'll just let you admire the back of my hand while I'm adjusting the leads for the final soldering. And I did go and order the correct replacement part, just in case I would ever get a reason to uh, reopen the TV again. But as all you seasoned home appliance improvers out there are well aware, this is bound to be one of those temponent solutions. And I have no doubt whatsoever that even though it looks a bit shoddy, this repair will last for at least a lifetime of the TV.
time for the fuse. And we ah, ooh, ooh, ah, 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 ooh. Damn it! Unsurprisingly, I don't stock any pre-leaded fuses, so I had to adapt a fuse holder. And the board had these uh, rivety-like things in the holes that made the fit quite tight. And I'm not quite sure why you would use that kind of rivet for a single side PCB like this, but my best guess it's more for stability than, for instance, current handling in this situation at least. We are now reaching the final stretch. It's time to get everything hooked up again and, uh, well, mother and speed dial, safety squints and all that. And I'm not quite sure, but I think that in this case the content of the bottle is used mainly for stability reasons. The board is live and the clicking is gone, but is this a success or a dead board? I tried to measure the output voltages, but there was nothing. There's gotta be some zero power standby rubbish inside this thing. And I see somewhere that interfaces with the remote control receiver and the side panel buttons that just tells the power supply controllers when to wake up. A quick scan with the thermal camera didn't reveal much. Everything seems cool, so there is only one thing left to do. And just a few months after I repaired the power supply and put it back in the TV, this message popped up. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't catch it uh, on camera on the TV itself, I was too much of a lazy bum, but you'll just have to take my word for it. So I once again got in touch with LG support and they said, yes sir, we will send a service technician to replace your power supply. What are the odds? So a few weeks later, a guy from a local uh, company shows up because LG, of course, doesn't send out their own service technicians, at least not to my remote location. I had to instruct him how to get the TV open because uh, LG did not send the correct documentation for my model. I asked if I could keep the old board, but apparently they had to send it back. So if anyone at an LG service center received my board with the intention of upgrading it and using it as a spare part, uh, sorry for my botch. That was all I had to offer today. If you are not fully satisfied, then sorry, I don't give any refunds of your time time machine is not fully functional yet but otherwise if you did enjoy it then please uh, give it a comment share it subscribe to this channel bye